Money. Very confusing topic sometimes, right? Things such as, and thoughts such as, how much money do I set aside? How much money do I need to start a business? What do I need to set aside for retirement? Well, don't worry anymore, you are watching the right video. In this episode of the Seven Figure Squad, I'm gonna be sharing three essential money tips that helped me greatly to help me become a first generation cash flow millionaire, starting in three, two, one, let's go. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jida. Steady through the rigor, yeah, I'm getting bigger. Just fighting in them trenches, now I'm making seven figures like. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy Matt Zapala here, hailing to you from Oak Brook Terrace, Illinois, and here to share with you three essential money tips to help you become a first generation cash flow millionaire. You'll join me in this episode of the Military Fresh Network where I break down these money tips in detail. During this interview, I answer questions on how to use your money, how to manage your money, and much more. I don't want to waste any more of your time, so let's jump right into essential money tip number one. You must reinvest into your business and be, yes, disciplined. Now, you might not like my answer, so let's just get this right out of the way. Let's check this out. Um, you, you bring up the fact that we don't get paid a lot. What percentage of our paycheck should we be able to put away a month? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Audience? Okay, you're not gonna like this answer. Give it to him. But this, but this is what we put away. Everybody says ten percent, bro. If you really want to build your business, uh, this is this is for me. This is for me for for me being an entrepreneur. We tucked away fifty percent of our income. The other 50%, so we, we gave it tithes, uh, uh, give it um, uh, taxes, the other 30% we saved for opportunities and reinvesting back into our business, and the other 50% we lived on. Okay. The other 50% we paid our business bills on. And some people say, well, but that's not enough money for me to live on. Well, great, make more money, right? If, if, the, if the 50% is not enough for you to live on, then increase and then fight for you to increase your income. I never made my money by saving my money. Yeah. I made my money by reinvesting my money back into myself, back into my business, back into my brand. Um, I had, I had, I've always had money tucked away and saved. I've, I've never skipped out on rent. I never skipped out on paying my landlord. I never skipped out on paying my vendors. Never, there, there's not a person in the business place today that says that, that money smart guy, seven fair squad doesn't pay the bills. Zero. Because that too, Jimmy, that's a representation of not only being me being an entrepreneur, that's also a representation of me being a Marine. That's my representation of being, being a veteran. That's my representation of somebody following the Bible. I need to honor my bills. And so therefore they look at us like, wow, okay, this guy's a Christian. This guy's a Marine. This guy's a veteran. This guy's a multicultural uh, demographic. He pays his bills. Maybe I need to change my stereotype on people that look like him. Amen. Amen. Interesting, right? You see, there's a huge benefit by reinvesting your money back into your business by first setting aside your cash. You see, I'm reminded of a story of some agents we were mentoring, we we're coming up in the business. And keep in mind, I'm a millionaire. I'm a first generation cash flow millionaire at this point. And they happen to be dropping me off at my house. I think my wife took the car one way and we were at a cigar lounge. I said, no, instead of my wife coming back, can you just drop me at my house? They said, sure, no problem. They pull up to my house and they're looking left and to the right. like this can't be your house, Mr. Millionaire. I said, this is my house because it's a very humble house. It wasn't a very extravagant house. They knew me for a period of time of being a millionaire. And we just had a very humble house in a very average and ordinary neighborhood. However, I was in an area where I could plug my kids into the best school systems, but we didn't have the biggest house on the best block. It was average and ordinary. Now, do you know why? Because we chose to delay our gratification and in the meantime, have go to stack up cash. And today, now, we live in a mansion. But for a period of time there, we weren't living beyond our means. We weren't living on our business too soon. We stuck to our guns to stack cash. And we're reaping the benefits of it today. Now, tip number two. You must build your financial house on solid ground. Look, I've been in the money game in the financial services industry for 22 years now. I've seen a lot of people grow. I've seen a lot of people crash and burn, and I've seen a lot of in-between. I saw the crash, a dot-com bubble burst in 01, 9-11. I saw the Great Recession in 08, 09, where, where people had uh, over-leveraged their homes, their houses, their homes were worth less than what they owed on it. People lost jobs, 401ks turned into 201ks. And now we are experiencing the great pandemic of 2020 and the recession and the 
contraction of businesses, and I've seen what financial instruments have collapsed and what have, again, resounded to be strong through chaos. Here's me breaking down how to build your financial house on solid ground to stand the test of time. Let's check this out. So, so with that being said, hey. all right, so I've been studying. So <laughs> what, what, what does this mean? Woo! This, uh, this is what you, what you build your life on, baby. All right, so can you talk about that for those who don't know what these bricks mean? What you building your life on? Let, let, me, show, let me show you. So when I'm looking at life, right? We got some we got some bricks here, man, because you know the good word says, you know, don't build your house on sand, build it on solid ground. And if you can build your financial house, I hope that it's built with values, right? Values, right? Principles, right, that stand the test of time, right? You, you build that because if your house were to fall, as long as you got these, man, you can always rebuild. You can always rebuild. Amen. And 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 what and, and and often that people say people one of my common question is what's one of the first thing I should put my money towards? Well, if you don't have life insurance as the original foundation of your home, you're building your house on shaky ground, and this is where you, this is where you build it, baby. There you go. So, all right, now this is the teaching point for our audience. So your expertise is in the life insurance business. And I've been learning a lot over the last week on life insurance because you think about insurance, right? Yeah. Um, you, I, I saw you break it down about your Apple Care insurance, right? Health care, <laughs> rental insurance, car insurance, insurance, uh, car insurance, all of that. So cell phone insurance. Yeah. So listen. So listen. Right here. The boo! <laughs> Look at you! Right. Look at you, Jimmy! I got that right. So then I also have this right. So, so this this is my foundation, right? Love it. Values and principles, right? Yep. Yep. My values and pr principles. But then I will go a step further and then put my purpose, right? Good, good. Because, you know, your purpose becomes greater than your product. Yeah. Because if you're just trying to sell a product with no purpose behind it, people are just buying yeah. materialistic, but they don't yeah. understand what the purpose is. I, I took that from you and I and I love that. So explain a little bit, if you can, to the audience, the the, the goodness of, of looking into life insurance yeah. to become wealthy for generational wealth. I, I took this from my first deployment. We're, we're about to launch into Somalia, Africa. Operation Restore Hope, right? We're getting geared up, armored up, and uh, our, our our OICs, our, command, our, 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 our our commanders, are like, hey, uh, go down to legal. Did you guys get your will done? Did you get this done? No, go down to legal. You can't, you can't, you can't. It was like going illegal. So we're going down there with our battle rattle. We're signing our will. We're signing, um, we're signing our life insurance. And they're like, dude, would you like to bump this up? Like, life insurance? What? What do you mean? What's life insurance? SGLI servicemen's. Did you want to bump it up to four hundred thousand? I'm like, all right, no problem. Another fifteen bucks. All right, I, I guess. So my life right now is worth four hundred thousand dollars. And so I, I look back on that when I left the military. I'm like, holy moly, what a what a very easy way to create instant wealth for your family. I didn't have to buy real estate. I didn't have to wait for an, uh, an investment in a stock to increase over time. Like instantly, four hundred thousand dollars would come your way. I'll give you an example. We just had we just had one of my new agents, Boricua. He's Puerto Rican, right? He's a salsa instructor. Okay. He sells a, a life insurance with me uh, on a part time, went to full time basis, right? Because COVID shut down, they're not teaching salsa classes, so he, can, he comes over into the insurance. Anyway, he helps a client twenty seven dollars a month into a life insurance. This client has a heart attack at thirty eight years old. 30 wow. years old. Who, what, he never thought in a million years he'd have a heart attack at 38 years old. Anyway, make a long story short, thank God he had life insurance. You know why? Because this style of insurance, he couldn't go back to work. He was re rehabilitating, all the different things. The insurance company gave him $84,000. Wow. I'm not talking about medical insurance. I'm talking about the life insurance. Gave him $84,000 and he's free to spend it however he wants to spend it. And his stress is off his shoulders and he can heal. He can get the right foods. 
He can go to holistic care. He can get whatever, you know, you know, you do after you get a heart attack to make sure it never happens again. That's what life insurance does. He didn't have to rush into another job. He didn't have to rush, rush this and be haphazard with all, all the things in, in his life. Or he has money to start a business. All these different things now is coming his way because he he set himself up uh, his financial house. You're right. I'm not talking about life. This is just your financial house. He set up his financial so he can rebuild. And yeah. he tells me I might never go back to my old job again. I hate these. I hated construction. <laughs> yeah. So so to that point, so I had a I had a drawing here, but a uh, matter of fact, yeah, I just I, I drew this just for a reminder to myself. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, okay, nice. You know what you know where I'm going with this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, the four homes of money. There you go. Okay. All right. Talk about it. There's four homes of money. Yeah, four homes of money. You know, uh, uh, v- very easy. You know, I remember when I got involved in the military. Everybody's telling me, "Oh man, when you make some money, put your money inside real estate." I'm like, "What you know about real estate? Talk. Well, talk to me then. Why? Why should I put my money? I don't know because that's where your money grows. Well, how do you know? What are the pros and cons? Have you done it? No. So why are you trying to tell me to do with my money? Oh, put your money here in the bank. Put your money here in the stock market. Put your money in the Bitcoin. Put your money in the forex. So all these different things you can put your money into. So no matter what home your money grows into, it's got to pass a test. It's got to pass a test. And I call that test my laser test. My laser test. What am I talking about? L stands. By the way, I just I just done the, the Marine Corps training with acronyms into, into, into insurance. Acronym. Right? right? So la- L, laser. L stands for liquidity. Right? S stands for safety. R stands for rate of return. T stands for tax advantages. Okay? Laser test. I got to make sure my money is liquid. I got to make sure my money is relatively safe. I don't lose my stuff. I got to make sure my money is earning higher than the cost of uh, in, uh, goods and services and inflation. I got to make sure what I pull, I pull my money out. The reason why the rich get richer, because they don't pay a dime in tax. Amen. Right? So I want to pull my money out that way. So when I put my stuff through the filters, do they, is, is a bank liquid safe has a rate of return tax? No. Mm-hmm. Real estate? No. Stock market? No. But boy, did life insurance have all four of those. The so, weirdest thing, the weirdest thing is life insurance has all those different things. So not it was only a, a protection, but what happens if you don't die too soon or you don't have a heart attack? Well, this money then grows into a, into a pile of cash that's liquid, safe, outpaces inflation, and you don't have to pay a dime in tax when you, when, when you take money from it. The, weird, the weirdest thing. And I realized I was doing research Look at all the publicly traded companies. Now I was looking at I was looking at their 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 public reporting. You know what I found out? Here's what I found out. They maximize the 401ks up to like twenty two thousand dollars a year. These rich guys, right? They shove twenty two thousand as much as you can inside a 401k. Okay, and then the next page. You know what I found out? They asked the company to pay them three hundred thousand dollars, but into an insurance policy. Weirdest thing. Mm-hmm. So twenty one thousand dollars is going to your four hundred one k, but three hundred grand is going to an insurance policy. And here's what most people think about insurance: it's expensive. No, no, no. The cost of insurance is different from the actual money that's growing there. I say, oh, that's the way rich people make money. Life insurance. And you're from what? You're from New York. You're, uh, New York, there. Yes. Some of the biggest insurance companies right there in New York. Yes. New York Life. Where, where does the Jets or the Giants play? Met Life Stadium. Life Stadium, yep. Yeah. Some of the big, right? Some of the biggest insurance companies are right there in New York. The biggest the biggest purchasers of corporate bonds in America, according to the American Council of Life Insurers, 60% of all corporate bonds are purchased by who? The life insurance industry, because they want safety for their policyholders. Interesting. So I just tried, I just followed the money. I just followed the money. I just follow what rich people do. I don't care about what you say, I care about where your money goes. Amen. And I found out where their money went. Like balling. That's balling, right? <laughs> right? That's it. So let me show you. So this, I don't know if you can see this, but this is this is my notes. <laughs> it's so, you see, solid ground, values, principles, morals, life insurance. Again, going through experience, 22 years of be seeing what worked, what didn't work. I've seen people crash, burn in real estate, crash, burn in stock market, crash, burn in Bitcoin, crash, burn. In, in a lot of different things, but what has stayed steady, what has remained steady has been life insurance. Because here's the bottom line. Not only are our personal finances 
kids' college education, my retirement, our clients, our tens of thousands, thousands of clients in life insurance, fixed life insurance, non-securities related. Guess how much money they've lost since 01, 08, the recession of 2020. How much money have they lost in their policies? Zero. Again, and just a disclaimer, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm simply licensed as an insurance agent, been that way for a long period of time. To see the ups, downs, the good, and the bad, and the ugly, I've seen life insurance continue to show its strength, not only over my short 22 years, but life insurance as a whole has been one of the oldest, longest withstanding businesses and industries in the United States of America. And if I go back 2,000 years, it's still one of those things that stands the test of time. And now to the third money tip, change your language. Money, start talking about it. You'll hear me talk in this next clip about how money entrepreneurship and capitalism has completely changed my life since leaving the military. I know in many homes it's taboo or not even talked about conversation about financial subjects or money. Now, it's up to you, you, the person watching this, it's up to you if you want financial change in your life, in your home, it's up to you to change that. So let's check this out. I, uh, I, I did a military vlog for about a year and a half. And the reason why I stopped doing a military vlog and just transitioned to just talking about making millions of dollars, I'll tell you this. I've never shared this. I don't think I've ever shared this with anybody. The more I got pulled into the veteran issues, a lot of the veteran community, a couple of things happened. Number one, I saw the lack of diversity within inside the veteran community that was being profiled. That's number one. Number two, I also realized that all they really wanted to talk about was guns and suicide. Oh, oh, oh. Talk about it. So, so I'm like, can we talk about a constructive message? Let's go. No, no, let's go. Let's go. Because you, know, you know what I mean? In the court. You hit the court. I said, and, "Good conversation." Hey, talk. Let's talk about it. And and so and so, I I I decided. You know what? I want to just shift into the primary me talking about how to put money in your own pocket, because then people will probably pay attention, and they don't got to do it with me. You know. I, by the way, just so you guys know, I don't have a course to sell. At least right now, I don't. I don't have a. I don't have. I don't. I don't have. A, I don't have a course to sell online. I don't have a millionaire manual. I, I don't have any of that. I'll probably asking you to do is just to follow what I'm doing and model some of the things I'm doing for your own niche, your network, your, your own um, a category and genre, whatever it is that you're doing. Cause there's values and principles that transcend all effort and entrepreneurial endeavors that you're doing. And so, and so I just happen to be in the world of insurance. Yeah, exactly. I just happen to be in the world of insurance. Got to get the right. Oh, <laughs> question mark. Here you go. Values. This was that's it, man. And, and so, um, and so, you know, PHP was started with sixty-six guys in two thousand and nine, uh, and our CEO, I'm, I'm the chief distribution officer. Our CEO founder is a army is an army veteran, uh, Humvee mechanic. And uh, make a long story short, we just started talking about the what what the world of entrepreneurship and and capitalism and and the the right type of cat, not the crony cat, the right type of capitalism. And what free enterprise has done to us, because what's got me where I wanted to go is not a handout. Yeah. What's got me where I want to go is to have a hand up. Yeah, man. And we realize that as we're going somewhere, we can't forget to look back and reach back and help the next man up. People helping people. Jack. And so that's what we're doing, bro. If, if I make 10 grand, let me show you how to make five grand. If I make 20 grand, let me show you how to make 10 grand. Right. Let me show you. Let me, let me just show you halfway what I'm doing. And therefore, it's up to you to take the other 50%, take it to the next level. But let me just show an example of success, what can happen if you are associating with the right people. So people uh, helping people, we started with 66 guys. And today we have over 18,000 agents across the country, uh, coast to coast. From every, from, we're, we're the fastest growing uh, insurance marketing organization that's multicultural and diverse. Bro, let me tell you. So from day one, we tried everything to build our subscriber base for the seven figure squad. We tried basic financial education videos. We tried even the veteran entrepreneur vlogs. But one thing we did notice was pretty profound. That I noticed when I talked about money, how to control your income, I realized that it impacted not only our local team, myself, my wife and I, but also affected hundreds and thousands of people across the country. You see, many people try to bury their head in the ground like an ostrich does and attempt to think that their financial problems and money problems will finally once and for all go away without actually addressing them. They would rather ignore it versus talking about it. You know, kind of like this lighting change you just noticed here during this video, you were ready to accept it, 
and move on. But over the years, I've gotten more and more comfortable talking about uncomfortable situations and topics, and so has my team. So here's a quick picture of the team I started my first agency with in January 2015, and I said, you know what, I'm gonna go from just being a salesperson inside the insurance industry to going from a sales leader to going from a sales manager, and now I wanna build a company to go from a business owner now to be a CEO, I want to find out how to level up my game, but here's the initial picture. Now, along the way, who knows if it was going to work? All I did was just be comfortable being uncomfortable and fast forward two weeks ago, in the midst of a snowstorm, in the midst of ice storms, in the midst of multiple cancel flights, people sliding off the roads, sadly some people get into accidents but having the wherewithal to say, you know what, the show must go on, I still need to get to Louisville, Kentucky. This is an example of what just showed up in our event in the midst of so many unfavorable and uncomfortable scenarios. So here, take a look at this clip from two weeks ago, what I'm talking about or what my team looks like now. We started our agency with 27 people in January 2015. And so hard work and effort, this is the result of it six years ago. So we check this out, babe? Yes. <laughs> In the middle of a storm, ice, snow, sleet, everybody in here represents the money smart movement from coast to coast. I'm super proud of you guys for showing up and showing up. Everyone that you saw in that clip not only reinvested back into themselves, time, money, resources, but they had a professional education in sales training, a professional education in insurance training, a professional education and injection of values and principles on how to build your business upon this thing we're talking about, which is Solid Ground by Tim Tebow, How to Catch the Vision for Your Family by Patrick Bet David. Everybody got some form of insight on how to better themselves financially. You see, all this started to happen and manifest because one day I got sick and tired of speaking a language called broken knees. I'm broke. My language is broken. I was attracting broke. And I shifted it to becoming uncomfortable and started adopting a new language called million ease, right? How language that millionaires speak of. See, how you see the world is how you do the world. How you see things is then how you do things. So regarding that new language of money, talking about million ease, why can't you be next? So before I let you go, please check out this video here by my mentor, Patrick by David, how you can get the right mindset of becoming a first generation cash flow millionaire. And in this video, check out the experience of what one of our agency builders did with one of their clients and what happened if a change in health in one of the clients' situation and their financial house collapsed, what the power of life insurance did to make sure they could rebuild with strength and confidence by building on this thing called a solid financial foundation. So with that being said, I'd love to know your thoughts, your follow-ups, your comments, your questions please drop it in the comments section below. If you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted next time we upload our next episode. That being said, thanks for tuning in. I'm your Money Smart Guy, and until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.